In this video, we're going to create a template that you can use for all of your podcast episodes. It's going to save you a huge amount of time for the editing, mixing and mastering process for each of your episodes going forward. We're going to set the session up so it's easy to navigate and fast to edit with. And I'm going to show you the different plugins that you should set up and some templates to use to get started quickly with each new episode. So when you load up Pro Tools, the dashboard is what you're going to be greeted with this window here. Just give your podcast episode a name, or you can call it podcast template. Um, this is just the, the template, that, the session that we're going to be using to create the template. File type is going to be wave and bit depth 24 bit and sample rate 44.1. If you can't change this and it isn't 44.1, I recommend going into the software, the driver that your audio interface uses um, and setting that to 44.1 kilohertz, especially if you're recording your podcast in this template, in this session. It's in my opinion, the best balance of quality file size, any higher than no one's gonna notice any difference, especially when it's rendered down to an MP3 file. So just click create there and save it into a folder. So here we are in the session. I'm just gonna make sure our audio interface is set up correctly. So we go to setup and playback engine and just make sure your, your device is set up there. Now I've got a Focusrite audio interface. Obviously it's not gonna look the same for you if you have a different audio interface or if you're just using a laptop built-in audio, um, you know, like Windows, then, you, then you'd just pick that one. Now let's create some tracks. So I'm just gonna press Control Shift N to create tracks, and we're going to create two mono audio tracks, and these are going to be our dialogue tracks. So just so we don't get things mixed up and to keep things nice and organized, I'm going to rename the, the first track is going to be host vocal, and the second track is going to be guest vocal. Obviously, if your podcast only has one speaker, just a solo podcast or more than two, then create a mono track, mono audio track for each of those. The next, we're going to go and create a couple more tracks, and these are going to be stereo tracks. Again, two more, and these are going to be for your intro and outro. If you have more music tracks like stingers in the middle or anything, then you're going to want to create another one of those stereo tracks. Or if you know that your intro and outro is in mono, then you'll need mono audio tracks for those. And I'm going to rename those as well. So intro and outro. The next thing is to create a master fader. It's going to be stereo. It's going to be a master fader. And this is what all of your tracks are rooted through. And one more track again, which is going to be another stereo track, and it's going to be an aux input. Or you can use a folder for this, but just to keep things simple, because I know all versions of Pro Tools have auxiliary tracks available. And what we're going to use this for is to send our vocals through to it. So if you want to make changes, if you want to increase or decrease the level of volume or something for the the vocals as a whole without affecting the balance, then then we can do that. So with your aux track, I can rename that just the vocals. The input needs to be a bus that you've chosen. Any bus will do. Um, we've got one called vocals there that I've already set up. And then your two get your two vocal tracks, the output of those in your IO column needs to be the same as the input of your auxiliary track. Again, you can just choose whichever whichever bus you like here. It can be bus one to two if you don't have any, any setup. Now our, our dialogue's gonna be going through that auxiliary track. And just to help th keep things uh, looking nice and organized, we're also gonna change the colors. So if you highlight the two vocal tracks and double click on this, color tab there. Going to give these, well, we can keep those blue, that's fine. And then we can change our intro and outro as well. So holding shift and clicking both tracks allows you to select them both. 
they can be green and then the aux track let's just have that as gray now we're going to change a couple of settings to help make editing easier we're going to group these two vocal tracks together so again if you hold shift and click both of them and hold control or command g and then we can call that vocals press ok and now whatever we do on one track like if we cut audio or copy and paste and solo and mute it's gonna affect both tracks and you can always turn that off if you need to do editing on an individual track by opening up your mixer you can find that under window mix and then turning off the group and then again we can control them independently we're going to keep that on for now the next thing to do is to set the counter to minutes and seconds beats and bars doesn't really make sense with a podcast episode and now we're going to bring in our intro and outro so you can either go to file and import audio or if you've got your folder open which we do you can just drag those in and when we save the template which i'll show you how to do towards the end uh, we're going to save it with this intro and outro in there so it's just another thing that you won't have to do for each episode now if you can't drag these around independently of each other you might have shuffle mode turned on and it's not going to let you move things around when you're bringing in your audio files you'll probably need to have it in slip mode up there on top top left so that you can drag wherever you want to drag uh, but when you're actually editing you're going to want it in shuffle mode and if you're not familiar what shuffle mode does is when you delete a piece of audio it fills the gap for you saving you a lot of time during the editing stage but if you want to go more in depth on how to edit I've left a link in the description to a video where I edit a full podcast episode in Pro Tools. Next we'll be setting up the plugins that you'll need to help you to enhance your sound and balance things during the mixing stage. But before we do that, I just want to share something with you quickly. I'm giving you access to the podcast production process cheat sheet, which is a free PDF download that goes through the full production process that you should be going through with each episode. It works as a great reference alongside what you're learning here in this video for each episode that you edit so that you don't forget any of the essential steps. And you can grab it for free if you go to claracast.com forward slash PPP, which is also linked in the description. Right, so let's set up our plugins. So for your host and guest vocal, let's keep things easy. I'm gonna click on your, num for your first plugin insert there and search for channel strip. Basically what we're gonna be doing is adding an EQ and a compressor. If you're not familiar, an EQ is like a very clever volume knob that allows you to increase or decrease the level of certain frequencies, so bass, treble, and the mids. And a compressor is sort of another type of clever volume knob where it decreases the level of the audio, the volume, once it reaches over a certain threshold, which is gonna give you a nice, smooth, balanced level throughout the whole track without you having to put in too much work. And Pro Tools does have individual compressors and EQs, but the thing I like with the channel strip, it just tidies things up and makes things easier. We can see everything all in one plugin. If you see down here, we got the EQ, and then up here, we've got the compressor. And I'm gonna show you a template that I like to use that you can start any podcast episode with. You're going to need to tweak this depending on what the recording calls for, but it's a great place to get started and it will help you save some time. So for the EQ, we're going to use a four step EQ process, just four bands. And it, this works for most podcast recordings as a place to start. So the first one is a high pass filter. So if you drag that little dot up there and drag it along to around, around 80 hertz or so, this is going to cut off all that sub bass and some of the bass, the low end rumble that we don't need in podcast vocal recordings. The second, we're going to do a little boost between one and 200 or so. Just use the Q knob there to tighten that boost. 
just a little boost in low end, which helps give some warmth that a lot of podcast recordings tend to need. The third EQ band at around 500 hertz. Again, just tighten that up with the Q. We're going to be reducing a good chunk of signal from this area. This kind of low mid section between around three to 600 hertz or so, you get a lot of kind of boxiness in podcast vocal recordings, especially if they haven't been recorded in an ideal room. You get a lot of reverb and this cut really helps to tame that. And I tend to use something looking similar like this for almost every podcast recording. And then the fourth band that we're going to use is a little boost around 5k and depending on what the recording needs you can turn this off if it's a very kind of bright and tinny recording or you can pull it down if it's a very dull recording then you can then you can leave that in there but again I've got a link in the description below that goes over how to mix podcast vocals next up is the compressor so we've got our compressor here you can see a visual representation up there going to turn the ratio up to three to one which means that for every one decibel that goes over this second orange line this threshold it's going to reduce it by three decibels and when you're playing back your audio you want the loud parts to be going over that threshold and the quieter parts to remain under the threshold you're going to bring that knee up a little bit to create a smoother gain reduction and just bring the attack up to around a millisecond but again it's going to depend on the recording we've also got a gate here this is not essential it depends on the recording again what this does is anything below that bottom threshold it's going to reduce in signal and this can help to remove uh, just general room noise and white noise that you get in recordings but we're going to turn that off for now there are other better ways of removing noise and again, I go that over that in other videos, which you can see linked below. And this is a good starting point that you can use to save time for your episodes. And then what we can do, if we click on that arrow up there next to preset, save settings, you can save this as podcast vocal, podcast voice or whatever and click save. And then it means that even if you're not using this template, you can quickly get these settings back. Now, if you hold the alt button, and drag that channel strip plugin onto the next one. And then we've just got a copy of that, both the compressor and the EQ on the other vocal track too. Your intro and outro shouldn't need anything. It should already be mixed and mastered. Uh, we're gonna also add a DSer plugin as well though to these vocal tracks. So if you click on the next insert and find the Dynamic 3 DSer, what the DSer does is reduce the harshness of the high frequencies when they get over a certain threshold. So sort of a combination of a compressor and an EQ, but specifically focused on those sibilant S sounds. And for this one, click on high frequency only. So it's only affecting the high frequencies. And 7K is a little bit high. Sibilance tends to sit between around four to six or 7K. As a default, I'm going to bring that down to five. And then by default, let's give it three dB. If you reduce this too much, then it can sound, it can make the, the recording sound really dull. But depending on how sibilant your recording is, you might need to adjust this. And then just copy that over to the other vocal track. One thing I also like to do is add a compressor on the vocal bus um, it's by no means essential it just helps sort of glue things together and reduce the level a little bit further in sections where you've got large amounts of both of the vocals together so and this just gives you another opportunity to see a different compressor within Pro Tools so if we get out the Dyn3 compressor limiter Going to set that ratio to two to one, just some very subtle compression and increase the knee, which smooths out the gain reduction. So it's less sudden. And again, you'd have to adjust this threshold based on, on your audio, but just having that extra 
compression there to smooth things out of the very loud bits when things get particularly loud like in you know when both speakers are laughing for it for example helps keep things balanced and then finally for the mastering stage we're going to need a couple of plugins on this master fader as well so in the first slot we're going to search for maxim stereo because it's a stereo master bus and this is going to prevent our signal from going over minus one decibel it just keeps it away from that zero db mark uh, and stops any potential distortion and then just ensure that your dither is switched on there as well and it's set to 16 uh, 16 bit what this does is when when we render our final podcast episode file down to a 16 bit mp3 file if your recordings are in a higher bit depth such as 24 bit having this dither on um, prevents any distortion noise from occurring when you render as a 16 bit file and then also what you want ideally is a loudness meter now by default most versions of pro tools as far as i'm aware don't have a loudness meter built in but you can download this one for free ulean loudness meter and install it as a plugin and this is going to show you the loudness of your track as a rule of thumb for my podcast episodes i aim for a loudness of minus 16 luffs integrated um, and the, having a loudness meter there at the end of the chain after your limiter once you've rendered it down once you've bounced your file you'll be able to see what the overall loudness is if you need you could also put in markers here so if we press enter where the episode might come in episode starts just to give you a quick reference point for where you need to drag your audio files to for each episode and then we're going to save our template file save as template and then you can just name it whatever you want the name of your podcast for example or just a gen generic name click include media if you have an intro and outro in there and want to include those and then every time you load up this template it's going to include that intro and outro so if we close this now create new this create from template button here whichever whichever group you've saved your template in is going to show up in this list so you'll be able to click on one of these click create and then it's going to bring up everything that you've just put together if you edit multiple podcasts of course you can save a different template for each podcast and again all of these things i go into in more detail in different videos how to edit mix and master so check the link below for that if you need further guidance and let me know in the comments section below have you set up your podcast template in pro tools let me know if you've made your own tweaks and and how it's helped you and as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time